Oh, man. Because that's exactly like the reason I said Brother Kirk, because I pay attention to what everybody prays when I can hear him pray. And one of the things I've heard Brother Kirk pray repeatedly is that not just that there would be a revival in this church, but that it would affect the region. Yep. And that's what yes. we really want. Because we know we know that God's going to. God wants to do a work across this whole world, amen. And I want to get into the get into the message. I have some a lot of scripture I want to cover. I'm not going to try to cover it all, really. We'll just we'll just go until we feel like the Lord uh, is telling us to stop for tonight. But I will finish it up at some point in time. Um, various reasons that this men, that this message came into my heart. But before we get started. Uh, with all of the scripture verses, I just had a couple of questions and statements. I don't know about you, but I really do like being part of a spirit-filled church. I mean, hallelujah. I really like when to be able to feel the presence of the Lord and to know that the Holy Spirit is moving. And really, to be honest with you, it's even bigger than just the gifts of the Spirit. But really, I'm going to be talking about the gifts of the Spirit tonight. And whenever I fill this up, maybe from a different angle than what we've talked about before, the way the Lord is putting it on my heart. But, you know, some of the more amazing things that I'm experiencing is just how the Holy Spirit is doing a work inside of people's lives. And he's awakening hope on the inside and he's using people and he's using them outside the walls of the church. Praise God. And I know that the enemy's, the enemy's not happy because he's trying to attack people in their physical bodies. And I know that he's trying to put weights and burdens on people. But you know what? He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. The Lord has the victory. Amen. And he has us. Amen. So I'm excited to be part of a spirit-filled church. I do want to say this, though, that in a spirit-filled church, and I know you know this. I'm preaching to the choir. The Holy Spirit must be allowed to move. Or else, the Spirit of God will be quenched. Yes. The Spirit of God can be quenched by the leader of the church. That's me. And we've already determined that that's probably happened in the past. But not just the leader of the church, but the Spirit of God can also be quenched by the vessels that the Spirit is moving upon to use at that moment in time. The Spirit of God could be quenched by the music ministry. I'm just saying it's possible. I'm not saying that y'all are quenching the spirit. I'm just, we're talking. We're just a family. Come on. We're just a family here. The spirit of God could be quenched by the music ministry if they are unaware or uncertain whether or not somebody is operating as a vessel to be used in the gifts of the spirit. So, for instance, if a word of prophecy or a word of tongues versus they are just praying or singing in tongues, which is also a valid form of worship. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is doing something in this church that I don't need it to look like a cookie cutter. I don't need anybody, well, by the grace of the Lord, let's just be the humble pastor. Uh, but I don't need anybody to tell me what a move of the Spirit is supposed to look like. I need the Holy Spirit to come in and start moving in us to know that that's what the Spirit of God is doing and he's moving. Amen. Praise God. And so, so really and truly, I want to say this, that I do not believe anything needs to be changed with the way our worship is going. I'm just trying to bring some clarification to what I feel like the Holy Spirit is showing me in my heart. And I want to communicate it to you as a whole. I really wish I would have saved it for a Sunday morning, but I felt like it was fresh on my heart. And the Lord wanted me to release it. Hopefully you out there that can't make it to church you'll, or you know, come on Sundays, you'll be able to watch it. So this is something that the Holy Spirit is leading our congregation to do, right? To worship the Lord in a particular way. And I can tell you that the Lord loves it when our people are drawn towards the front to worship the Lord. Yes. Lord Larson made a comment after he left this place. I didn't hear it, but Robert told me that he made a comment on worldwide. No, well, yeah, it was worldwide television. It'd be, or at the study the word. Worldwide television about the fact about how the music ministry was flowing in an anointing like he had never experienced before and something about the altar ministry. Can I tell you right now that really what's the heart of happening in this place right now is taking place at this place right here, right here. But listen, this is the thing. I want this whole room to be coming on. That's what, see, that's what I'm trying to say. And, 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 and listen, what I mean by that is this. I'm not trying to tell you that you have to. Please don't misunderstand. You need to be led by the Spirit of God on how you're going to worship the Lord. Because there's people that sit in the back that love the Lord and are worshiping the Lord. There's people that sit down. There's people that stand.
stand up. There's people that raise their hands. There's people that don't raise their hands. There's people that speak in tongues. There's people right now, maybe they don't speak in tongues. There's people that sing in tongues. Maybe there's some people that don't even fill with the Holy Spirit and don't even speak in tongues yet. But this is the thing all I'm asking is everybody do. When we come into the house, Let's worship the Lord. That's right. Because he's worthy. That's right. He's worthy to receive glory and honor. And I believe that when we do that, however we can, even if we're sitting down and we're just mouthing the words on the screen, I believe we're allowing the yes. Holy Spirit to have his way. Amen. Amen. One of the things that I will tell you, though, is that people are being drawn. And a lot of times when people are coming up here, they're not even asking for prayer. Really, they're just coming up here to worship the Lord. Amen. Now, one thing I will tell you, it's likely that Brother Kirk and myself from time to time, if you come up here even to pray, even to, I mean, even to worship, and you even don't want prayer, and maybe somebody else might too. As a matter of fact, I encourage people. I don't think we should overdo it. I want us all to be led by the Spirit. But I, it may, you may get hands laid on you anyway, even if you didn't ask for prayer. Why? Because I'm believing God's going to do some divine impartation and some divine awakening. And so, can you, let me ask you a question. Steve, would you rather just stay asleep in the Spirit? Or would you rather if... The, like, I'm just saying some of y'all, like, I'm not even convinced for sure. Was, okay, that, I get it. I've been there. But if the Spirit of God wants to wake up your spirit yes. and bring life to you and to bring joy to you yes. and to bring healing yes. to you. If you, if the, if I was going to tell you that the Holy Spirit can touch things on the inside of you, there ain't no psychiatrist, ain't no medicine, ain't nothing that no man could do, but that the Holy Spirit in one moment of time could bring healing from every broken heart, every situation. We can sit here and we can get people to start lifting up their hands and tell the worst things that's happened to them. And I'm here to tell you, no matter how vile, how bad it was, how hurtful it was, I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit can heal it and not only he heal it, he can turn it around and he can turn tragedy into triumph and he can turn you into a vessel of the hope and the love of God that now will flow out of you and it will flow into somebody else and it will bring healing to them that's how God works, that's what God does, that's his business my friend, and if I told you that he could do that, and he, all you had to do was to start, even if it was just something as simple as sitting down and read and singing the word from the screen, and to start to believe it in your heart, and watch him to cause you to come alive. Hallelujah. In the spirit of God, I'm here to tell you, he'll heal you yeah. if you'll give him a chance. Amen. He'll give you hope Hallelujah. if you'll give him a chance. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. So nothing really needs to be changed. And when God loves it when people are drawn to the altar. I might say a couple people's names, but I'm not trying to make y'all feel weird. I just, while the Lord was dropping this in my spirit, I could see our services. That's how it's been when I've been praying. I see y'all out there, and I'm praying, I'm praying specifically for y'all, I'm praying for Wade, I'm praying for Robert, I'm praying for And I was seeing people that do come to the front of the worship. And, and I was thinking to myself, man, the Lord loves it. He does. Yeah. He loves it. And I mean, I'm not going to go on and on and list everybody, so I'll leave people out. I'm just going to mention maybe two people. Is that okay? It doesn't mean, y'all all know y'all worship in the Lord, yeah. right? But I was thinking the first time I was going to say it, I saw Elena sitting down Indian style at the altar. Yeah. And then now sometimes I do it. Because, like, you know, I'm on my knees and sometimes I sit down Indian style. And, and But this is the thing. Can I tell you that the Lord loves it? Yes. Whenever, like, Elena is sitting Indian style worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that the Lord loves it? I'm just saying, whenever Bill Fry comes up here and he does his thing, I'm not trying to make you feel weird, Bill, but I'm just saying. It's like he doesn't be sitting there walking and clapping and just start singing. Hallelujah. And I, I know y'all, some of y'all might be like, don't that man know that he might be singing out? Bill Fry don't care if he sounds like he's singing out of tune. Jesus is deserving of worship. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This ain't no entertainment show, my friend. Amen. Like, if you're looking for some kind of professional production, you came to the wrong place. Amen. Jesus needs, Jesus <laughs> desires to be exalted. He's the king of kings. Hallelujah. I hope you get the point I'm trying to make. And he, it pleases him when his people worship the Lord. It ple and guess what he does? He responds. How does he respond? With his presence. He pours out more of his presence. What can happen in his presence? Anything can happen in his presence. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. You 
you walk in one way, you leave another way. You walk in downcast, hallelujah, and you wake up, oh, you leave woke. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking woke. Woke to the right day. Woke yeah. to the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some people up here praying, but that's not what people do. And other, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but I don't really care what other people do. Come on, come on. So no, 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 no. In other churches, when people come to the front, they're only coming for prayer because they because they bound up in sin and they need to repent. Well, guess what? That may not be what's going on in this church. They might be coming up here to get on their knees because they're thankful that the Lord done delivered them from sin. Hey, hey! That's a good one to think about, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, this isn't other churches. This is his church. Amen? I don't know uh, what you're doing, but for me, I'm trying to be like the woman with the alabaster yeah. box. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, so you like a woman. I, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said I'm trying to worship him like that. I'm not confused about my gender. I'm trying to, see, men have a hard time. Even Bill gave a testimony. I'm not trying to pick on Bill or lift Bill up. I just remember just now that he gave a testimony. He admitted that it was a very difficult thing for him as a man the first time he went to lift his hands. Yeah. And, and I do believe that that is a problem that men sometimes have. I'm not trying to tell you you got to lift your hands. I'm just trying to make a point. Sometimes when our hands are down and downcast, if the enemy is wanting to keep our hands down. Sometimes when our hiney, I mean, when our backside is staying in the seat, it feels like there's lead in our, that's my dad used to say, boy, you got lead in your hiney. No, he didn't use that word. He said, you got lead in your backside. Get up and get booed. So what I'm saying is sometimes the enemy wants to downcast us, put oppression on us, yes. to keep us seated and to keep our hands heavy, heavy hands. Lift up those heavy hands. <laughs> Let all God's people, well, what is it? Shake off those, heavy shake hands, off those heavy, hands, heavy bands. Thank you. Lift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. That's right. And so the enemy is trying to prevent you from worshiping because there's freedom. I, I look, I know people think I look like a fool. I'm pretty sure at the hospital I work at. They probably think I'm a fool. But I guarantee you, well, whatever. Let's just not even get into that. Let them think I'm a fool. I'm here to tell you right now. Look, there was one woman today. I was in there. I was in there. And there was a lot. Dude, whenever they were coming out, they were aggravated. And I said, man, what's wrong? Oh, we've been in this room. Well, it's a long story. Okay. I didn't try to make them wait in the room. I said, well, ma'am, I'm here now. Can I help you? So go back in there. And at some point in time, she said this. I'm not going to go on because we talked for 25 minutes after that, 30 minutes after that about the Lord. Come to find it. But anyway, she said, she said, thank God we didn't leave when we were about to leave. The devil was, she, this woman said this, the devil was trying to make us not be able to talk to you to hear this. Mm -hmm. She said that. And, um, oh, Lord, I'm going to lost my train. <laughs> Why do I do it? Okay, yeah, because we just talked about so much, and I can't even, I can't even hardly remember. But I'll remember it again before it's over with. All right, and then I'll share it with you because it was so encouraging what what she she said. Praise God. But anyway, let's keep on going. So I want to say this: that I want to be like the one with the alabaster box, and I just want to worship her because you know what Jesus said of her in one of the gospels. He said this: that to whom much is forgiven. They love much. That's right. To whom much is forgiven, they love much. You know, the Lord has forgiven each and every one of us of so much. But the reality of it is, is this, is that until the Holy Spirit gives us a re revelation of how much he's forgiven us, once he gives us a revelation of how much he forgives us or has forgiven us, then we start to look like the woman with the alabaster box. And we come into his presence and we pour our heart out before him. We allow our life to be broken before him. And it becomes a very uh, powerful thing, you know. And, you know, there's that song that I believe was inspired by this woman. And uh, it said, you know, and I wanted to say that this is sometimes, I love that song. I'll, now, there's some of the words in it that kind of make me feel a little funny as a man. But I'm being honest with you. I sing it and when I feel it. It, and it says, I want to sit at your feet 
drink from the cup of your in your hand, lay back against you, and hear your heart beat. Yeah. The apostle John put his head on the yeah. Yeah. I want to hear your heart beat. And then, and then I wrote in here, did you hear that heart beat? You know the heart sound when we're in nursing school? We learned it's supposed to be like this. This is what you, you think it sounds like. Lub -dub, lub -dub, lub -dub, lub -dub. Lubbed up, lubbed up. That's what the heart sounds like. Lubbed up. Can you hear that? More souls, more souls. Mm -hmm. Press in, press in. Yeah. Seek me more, seek me more. Ask for more, ask for more. Keep inviting my presence. Invite my presence. That's his heartbeat. I believe that. The closer I get to him, the more I hear him speak to my spirit. It's what he's saying. He's saying more souls. Seek for more, ask for more, and when we do, I promise you, he's going to give us more. Amen? Amen. If no one else in the church, and I'm not trying to prod you to come to the front, ever comes to the front to worship him, I want to worship him because ain't no rocks going to cry out on my ship. Amen? You know, I think Jesus would say, do you see what I'm doing to you or in you? You come here, you empty yourself out to me. I fill you up with more of me. Then I send you out there and you pour yourself out. Then you come back in and, you, and, I, and I fill you up. Pour yourself out. I fill you up. Pour yourself out. I fill you up. This is a beautiful thing. And nobody's going to tell me anything different. Amen. The Lord says, I love your worship, Crossway. I love the way you love on me I, and let me love on you. And don't let anyone steal what is going on here. If the altar gets too full, I was thinking about this. And if the altar gets too full because people start coming, because sometimes on a Sunday, man, it's kind of like hard to walk. And I was thinking, literally thinking, I'm not trying to be dramatic and try to make a show of things. But I was literally thinking the Lord will either send more people. And we'll have more money. And if we don't have more property, we'll just build up and we'll still expand the all. Or, we'll, or one time it waits at somebody, you probably could knock that back wall out. We'll knock the back wall out. But guess what? We need to get, we, we, we might need more altar space. And look, we got empty seats. We could start right now with stacking this front row. I mean, and we need to have to move back to the next row. And then the next one, they would be kind enough to do that for you. But we might have to just move this row out and stack them chairs. Because if we need more room, we need more room at the altar. Because we don't want to prevent people that want to worship the Lord and lay down at his feet and feel his heartbeat and to cry out to him. Because that's the most prominent thing. That's the most important thing. Because Jesus is preeminent. And he deserves the Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that with all my heart. Oh, you're a little too rowdy, preacher. You're just going over the top. Yep, sure am, because I'm finally getting awakened to the, not, not just finally, but for a long time. I think we're starting to experience the way the, we're, it's supposed to be like this, yes. my friend. Yes. Yes. It's supposed to be like this. The church, the early church wasn't like the church today. Jesus was getting glory and the Holy Spirit was moving. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Now let's go a little bit deeper with this altar worship. If you want to sing, if you want to sing in tongues, you know what you do? You sing in tongues. Yeah, that's right. Be mindful. I'm just going to give a little bit of direction. If you want to sing in tongues during worship, please, pretty please, sing in tongues. Hallelujah. But be mindful that you're not so loud. I'm not telling you don't sing loud. And I'm going to bring clarification to everything that I'm going to say. So just hold on with me. Just be mindful that you're not so loud that you cause confusion to the music ministry and they think you're giving a word. But to the music ministry, you got to have some discernment from the Holy Spirit too. Well, hold on a second. That's going to bring confusion. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but let me ask you a question. Who saw, who, who listens, who watches Sun Life uh, TV broadcast? Okay, I know, I know y'all do. All right, who saw Ross Kibito preach to the world when he preached on Sun Life uh, TV? Who, who watched it? Y'all didn't see Ross Kibito preach to the world back when he was a student in Bible college? Y'all didn't see, oh, y'all need to go back and y'all need to find that. Y'all need to go back and find that in the memories. That brother was a student in Bible college and they let him preach on a Sunday night. 
And that brother went to preaching. Hallelujah. He'd be coming in June or July, too. That brother went to preaching, and hallelujah, out of nowhere, he busted off and praying and speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. He went to praying in tongues. He went to speaking in tongues. And you know what's interesting? Brother Swagger didn't call him down. You know why? Because everybody in that room knew that brother wasn't giving a word in tongues. He wasn't giving a prophetic word in tongues. He was just... Out of the overabundance of the Holy Ghost moving on him, he just started to speak and to pray in tongues, but it wasn't a prophetic word. Well, how do you know the difference? It's called discernment of the Spirit. It's called maturity in the Spirit. Hallelujah. But I'm, that's why I'm talking about all this. Because I believe that it's important because I love being a Spirit-filled church. And we don't want to hamstring the Holy Spirit. And at the same time, we don't want to, and I'm going to talk about some of this. We don't want to be the Corinthian church. But first of all, we got to understand what the Corinthian church might have looked like before we can say we don't want to be the Corinthian church. But we do want the gifts of the Spirit moving that we're moving in the Corinthian church. We want to be like the book of Acts. We want the Holy Spirit to move and to be free to move and to have his way. So I'm going to try my best also tonight to try to give you an idea, and I'm going to need some help when I do it, to get us, give us an idea of what it might have looked like in the Corinthian church. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Because I've read the letter a couple of times, and I think that I'm picking up on some internal evidences that can show me what was possibly going on, because even you have to understand the information that we have on the gifts of the Spirit that were given to us by the Apostle Paul was is there. You know why? Because of correction. That's right. It was there. It's written for us to know how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit because the church in Corinth was not operating correctly in the gifts of the Spirit. So that right there tells us the purpose of the letter. And there's other internal evidences within the letter that give us an idea of what the mindset was in the Corinthian church. And I'll share that in a moment, too. So let's go a little bit deeper. If you want to sing in tongues, sing in tongues. If you want to give a word, give, give a word. If you want to sing in your natural language, and this is all based on scripture, then guess what you do? You sing, sing, sing. Hallelujah. You sing. And don't let nobody tell you not to sing. And if you don't want to sing, don't sing. It's called freedom. It's called freedom and liberty. It's called you worshiping Jesus the way you desire to worship Jesus. And if the preacher wants to take off running around the church... Guess what? He's going to take off running around the church. Yes. And if everybody wants to start following, hallelujah, we'll have a Jericho march just like the old day. I ain't ashamed. I don't want to be ashamed of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's be mindful not to be so loud, right? I mean, you can sing out loud. Let's get this straight. You can sing out loud, but don't sing so loud that they're going to think you're trying to take Naya's job. <laughs> well, well, why, preacher? Why? Because there's a weird place that we can get where we're taking the focus off Jesus and we start to put it on ourselves. Yeah. Right? Okay. But Jesus is the one to be exalted here. Not, not us and our gift and our beautiful voice that we're doing the trial. Like, you understand what I'm saying? All right. But I, but I want to make this clear. Sing, don't stop doing what you're doing because there's nothing that's been wrong what we're doing. All right? So that's for each individual. I'm going to make that clear. And if you're uncertain whether I was talking to you and saying, please keep doing what you're doing, call me after service and I'll verify it. <laughs> All right? If you want to pray up here out loud, pray. Just be mindful that your praying gets to a certain decibel range that because they may think that you're about to give a prophetic word. And as a matter of fact, when we're talking about that, and if you're praying in tongues or singing in tongues, make sure that if it gets to a certain level, that the music ministry may begin to believe, because this is partly for the music ministry to understand the work, the prophetic gifts. Right. See, there's a difference between a gift of prophecy, the way that Brother Kirk's been operating a lot in, which is words of knowledge, words of wisdom. That's an individual word given to an individual. But the other prophetic gifts that I know are in this place right now as I'm talking to you, they are in this place and they're in some of you. That Sabrina already operates in the gift of tongues and interpretation, but there's more. There's other people that have the gift of tongues and separate people that have the gift of interpretation. And there's people in this house that have the gift of prophecy. 
and they just haven't released it yet. Yes. And it needs to be Amen. released. Because if we're quenching it, that means what? We're quenching the Holy Spirit. I don't say that to beat nobody up. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. If you like being a spirit-filled church and you like the gifts flowing, then we need to let the gifts flow. Amen? And so, so I want you to understand that. So let's just say, for instance, that you're a person that already is, is you pray and you sing, and when you pray and sing and you're worshiping, you, you pray and sing loud. All right? And but but then all of a sudden, because I've talked to some people, I, I've only I know that I've given one word in uh, one prophetic word. And I think the only people that were there was Pamela and Sue. <laughs> and I, I know it was a prophetic word. I don't remember what all I said. It came out so fast. But it was like the spirit of the Lord fell on me and I was on my face. And and so I know what that felt like. And I know for a fact that if y'all are actually being used by the Holy Spirit to bring forth the prophetic word, you're going to feel it and you're going to know it. Yes. And I've talked to a couple of people that are like, absolutely, I can tell the difference. I can tell the difference when my vessel is giving glory to the Lord, and then I can tell the difference when the Holy Spirit is coming upon me. And it's almost like I can't hold it back. But you can hold it back because there's scripture that says you can't hold it back. And so what I'm trying to tell you is I don't want you to hold it back. And what I'm trying to say to the music ministry is this. So what I am saying to the vessel is if you're already praying loud, singing loud, and then all of a sudden you get overwhelmed, you're going to have to pray and sing louder, buddy. You're going to have to make it in such a way you might have to stop. If you're walking, you might have to stop, stand still, whoever you are, wherever you are, and you're going to have to let that thing come out of you in such a way that there's no more any confusion. And when that happens, all the music needs to be brought back. Well, why is that? Why do we as the... Now, I know y'all not saying that. I'm just, you know, y'all know me. Y'all know me. Well, why do we have to be quiet? Because the music ministry is going to yield. You know why the music ministry is going to yield? Because it's the Holy Spirit. Right. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit talks, the music ministry comes back. It's not even impossible that a word might come forth. It's not the norm. I don't think it should happen every Sunday. Maybe I'm wrong, Lord. I don't know everything. That a word of knowledge would come forth or a word of prophecy would come forth while the preacher's preaching because the word's going forth. But hey, hallelujah. We'll know it if it's the Lord. Right. right? And so that's what I'm trying to say. When the Holy Spirit starts speaking, yeah. then everything yeah. yields to the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're praying in tongues, singing in tongues, if you have a word of prophecy or a word in tongues, just to make sure that there's a difference in the delivery so that everybody knows what's going on. I'm just trying to help us because we want the flowing of the Holy Spirit. We want to let the Holy Spirit have his way. He's starting to move and maybe there's some ways that we're hindering him that we're not even aware of. Right. All right. So. Um, all right. So, well, if they're praying and out loud singing out loud and praying in tongues and, and out loud and singing in tongues out loud, how will they know the difference? That is going to be out of order. No, it's not going to be out of order. You know why? Two reasons. I already said it. Discernment, number one, and discernment, number two. You, your, your vessel and, and the gift of discernment and, dis, and, and discernment will allow you to know the difference between and so what I'm trying to tell you is it's wrong for people in the audience to think this way, <clears throat> to think that, oh, I can hear them praying in tongues at the altar. That's 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 out of order. No, it's not. It's not out of order at all. You know why? Because they're not giving a prophetic word in tongues. Because some people are. are and I don't mean that we're this way, but I need you to understand. Some people that are call themselves Pentecostal full gospel don't even understand the difference between the prophetic gift of the word of tongues versus the prayer language. Right. Yes. And it's important that we understand that there's a huge difference yes. between the two. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get into some of that a little bit, but that's how you know the difference. It's called discernment. And if, you, and if we don't, and how do you get discernment? Well, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a difference between discernment and the gift of discernment. 
The Lord will give you discernment just based upon biblical wisdom and the spirit of God living in you. But then some people operate at an even higher level because they've been given the gift of discernment, discerning of spirits. You can discern various types of demonic spirits. But not only that, you can also discern what spirit a person's operating in, whether it's in their flesh. Like, <laughs> okay, let's just stop there. But you get the point I'm trying to make. So the music ministry has discernment. The prophetic vessel has discernment. Somebody says, I don't even know what discernment is. And that's where I'm going to say, okay, well, then get filled with the Holy Spirit and ask and he will give it to you. Amen. Somebody says, I don't know. This sounds like chaos and disorder. No, chaos and disorder was Corinth. Well, that's what I kind of feel like this is. I'm trying to like think in your mind. You might be thinking this. I feel like that's what this is. This is chaos and disorder. Uh, no, no. let me tell you what chaos and disorder would have been like. Somebody just walked out and was going to use them as a vessel to get this across. So I'm going to use a couple of people. I need Bill, I need you to be a volunteer. Uh, you can just sit right there. Everybody can sit down. I need uh, Brother Kirk. I'm going to need you to do it. I know you don't really talk loud like Pastor Matt, but I know you're not shy. I'm going to need <laughs> you to do it. So this is what I want. Bill... <clears throat> I was trying to think of words that y'all could say uh, to get this point across. I thought about, you know, something about sailing a boat. Okay, I don't know why, because I just remembered that, but you don't have to say it. It's just a point. I need you to come up with a phrase in your mind. It can be any kind of phrase. I sailed the waters of Nigeria, and you just keep repeating it. It doesn't have to be that. That's just what came to my mind. But whatever you're going to say, I need you to get it in your head, and you're going to repeat it over and over again, and you're going to repeat it loud. Brother Kirk, whatever words you want to say, I, it doesn't matter to me what it is. I know I'm being vague, but you can say, oh, glory. <laughs> I think of you saying that, whatever it is. Oh, glory. Amen. You can say, hallelujah. You just got to keep saying it, and you don't stop till till we stop, all right? Um, Mike Lane. Good. What you gonna say, brother? Well, you got something you want to say, huh? I don't know. You just need to say something. Just say Jesus. Just keep saying Jesus. You go with that. All right, we'll keep it like that. Miss Lily, what you gonna say, huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There you go. Praise the Lord. And y'all just gonna keep on saying it. One more. Do I have another volunteer? We can get one more here. Anybody else want to be volunteer? Gonna talk out loud, Robert? You want to say something like, you, know, you need a new roof? Huh? Yeah, hallelujah. Naya, what you going to say back there? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. There you go. That's works. That's good for me. Peanut butter. I like that. Okay. So, when I point at you, when I point at you, you're going to start, you're going to start talking and you're not going to stop till I ask you to. Okay? You got what you're going to say? All right. Well, let's start with you and I want you to say it loud. Red skies in the morning is a sailor warning. Red skies at night is a sailor tonight. Keep going. Red skies in the morning is a sailor's warning. Hallelujah. Red skies at night is a sailor's warning. Hallelujah. Red skies in the morning is a sailor's warning. Red skies at night Hallelujah. is a sailor's warning. Red skies in the morning is a sailor's warning. Red skies at night is a sailor's warning. Red skies at night is a sailor's warning. Red skies at night is a sailor's warning. was yeah. uh, and Now, I want you to understand the internal evidences that tell me this is, number one, they ate all the bread and they drank all the wine. When it was time for everybody to come together to take communion together, by the time the poor folk got to the house, the rich folk had already eaten all the bread and drank all the wine. Now, what do you call that? I mean, just a simple word. Let's call it. It's a greed. Let's find another one. Selfishness? Is that a good one? I mean, is that the spirit of Christ? What is that? Okay, let me tell you another one. What did the apostle Paul call Corinthian church? You are carnal. Why did he call them carnal? The flesh was there, but what else? They were more worried about their favorite preacher than they were about hearing the truth. Now, with that context, and as we go through some of these scriptures that we're going to go through, and again, we probably, it's already almost 8 o'clock, so we're not going to probably get that far. And you know me, I'm going to do this all over again next week, and that won't be cool. We've got to get to the meat of the story. But one of the things that, that, that with all of that context in place, 
Because let me just say something else. Have you ever noticed if you're honest with yourself as a believer? And this is actually something good right here for us as believers. As God has used you in the kingdom, has there ever been a time that the Lord spoke to you later when you said, you're kind of looking for a little bit of recognition there, buddy? He might not talk to you that way, but he talked to me that yes, way. Yes, sir. Man, you kind of like sure are thinking about yourself and yeah. your little gift a whole lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You may not say it exactly like that. Okay. But there's something that happens to the vessel yeah. when he starts to be used by the Lord that he, me, and I picture to say, every one of us, yeah. Yeah. we would kind of want people to acknowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. And especially if there's been times in our lives when people have rejected us. Right. I can be the first to tell you that there's yeah. been plenty of people that rejected my preaching. And I don't know if it's because they didn't like what I was saying or that just wasn't really doing that good of a job of saying it. But nevertheless, I'm just trying to make a point that a lot of times we find ourselves, that's a big thing to admit that, but that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. And we want, something in us wants to be seen. That's right. Pride, so we got to be careful of all of the things that we're doing that we're being led by the Spirit. Yeah. Sing loud, sing in tongues loud. Pray loud, pray in tongues loud, but there gets this place where it turns weird. That's right. Yeah. Where before you know it, can I say this again? I am not telling anybody to stop doing anything that they're doing right now. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm trying to make a point. Do you understand that I have been in other churches long before I ever ended up in this church? Do you understand that I have seen a lot of things take place in churches where people were drawing attention to themselves instead of playing putting attention on the Lord. And okay, so anyway, y'all get the point that I'm trying to make. Yep. Right? Yes. Uh, so I believe that when you now view the teaching in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and sandwiched with 1 Corinthians 14, sandwiched in the middle of the love chapter, yes. let all things be done with love. Right. Because the purpose of God's gifts is to the edification of the body. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and so you get that. With all of that said, then, then, we'll, then we'll move forward. All right. So praying in tongues versus prophesying in tongues. And, and the only reason I'm really even focusing on this, because in these scriptures, we will also see the prophetic gift of prophecy. And let us understand, I'm not covering all the ones that we've that Brother Kirk and Sister Brenda talked about before, but let's be clear. There was there's many other gifts, but I'm focusing on these because these tend to be the ones that I believe through the internal evidence were the ones that were causing confusion in the church of Corinth. It's less confusing if Brother Kirk comes up to you on the side and the Lord gives him a word and he says it to you in your ear. And you're like blessed by the Lord than it is if a bunch of people start giving words out loud and people are talking in tongues all over the place and they're not following a certain order. So let me just say that about this. I believe personally that's the context of Corinthian church. That's why the correction had to be brought in the Corinthian church. So the apostle Paul makes the comment. He says that you come behind no one in your gifts, but then he begins to explain these are, this is the way that the order needs to be. That's a big difference. Can I just be real? That's a big difference than the way our church used to be. Okay. And I'm using that as another extreme, but not just our church, other churches. I've been in other churches. The Holy Spirit is hidden in the closet like he a crazy cousin. Yeah. We're not going to let him out on Sunday morning because it's going to freak everybody out. Oh, if they show up and brother so-and-so is up at the altar and they can hear him speaking in tongues, well, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Oh, well, they might need to go find a Presbyterian church because <laughs> this is a Pentecostal church. And we've been asking for the Holy Spirit to start moving for a long time. We ain't about to ask him to calm it down. <laughs> that ain't what I'm going to do. Right? All right. And so, so here we go. Let's start with praying in tongues. You ready? So the Holy Spirit, I know I've been talking about this scripture a lot, but the Holy Spirit is one with our spirit, 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So the thing of it is, and this is a good little word to speak, when you get saved, 
The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. There's a lot of other scripture I could use out of Ezekiel chapter 36, out of Jeremiah 31. But the idea is this, is that the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside. John chapter 14, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside. But he also renews your spirit and he brings your spirit alive to the things of God. Now, you can become made alive to the things of God, and then you can start bringing stuff into your vessel that starts to squash the things of God. And you can cause injury and damage to your own spirit, but that doesn't mean that you've automatically lost your, your faith and aren't born again anymore. It's possibility what you need to do is you need to get all that garbage out of your life and you need to let the Holy Spirit come back to life. And when he does, you will start to come alive in the things of the Spirit of God. And it's going to become evident in your life that your spirit is one with the Holy Spirit because your life is going to reflect it. I hope that makes sense. Amen. So we're talking about praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, Jude chapter 1 verse 20. This is one scripture we use. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, you may think this, but I don't think this. Praying in the Holy Ghost doesn't always mean that you're only praying in tongues. But I do believe when you're praying in tongues and you're truly praying in the Spirit with praying in tongues, that you are praying in the Holy Ghost. But you can also be praying like I personally believe, and I can tell the difference, and there was only a couple of people in there. I believe that I was praying in the Spirit tonight before church. I always want to pray in the Spirit, but I can tell the difference sometimes when I'm trying to pray in the Spirit. And sometimes it's different from the people that are around me. Sometimes when it's in a larger crowd, when I'm by myself, or when there's just a few people, sometimes it has to do with what other people are bringing with them in there. Sometimes it has to do with what I brought in there. But the point is, is that tonight I felt that I was praying in the Holy Spirit, but I wasn't even praying in the Spirit, quote unquote, praying in tongues. I was, we're being led by the Spirit. And sometimes when we're being led by the Spirit, it's almost like that prayer that we've entered into the Holy of Holies. We made it out of the outer court into the inner court into the holy place. Now we're going through the veil and we're in the Holy of Holies where the very presence of God is. And we're beginning to pray, being led by the Spirit of God on how to pray. And sometimes that involves praying in the Spirit. I hope that makes sense to you because it doesn't have the word tongue right but praying in the Holy Ghost. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you will also, in praying in tongues, you can build up your most holy faith. That's why it's beautiful when people are up here if they're praying and singing in tongues because you may be, but I don't understand what they're saying. We'll get to that. You don't need to understand what they're saying. They don't even understand what they're saying, but the Holy Spirit understands what they're saying. Hallelujah. And they may be building up their most holy faith. They're like, oh, I'm about to ask the Lord to start showing up in my life. And then if you get five or six people up in here and they're praying that way, next thing you know, the Spirit starts to move. Hallelujah. And His presence comes down and He starts to do stuff. For folks. Amen? All right. Oh, Lord Jesus. Here we go. Wherefore, here we go. The Holy Spirit and me are praying together. There you go. I just said it. But look, I don't understand, but he does. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. That's not, that he's not telling you not to pray in tongues. And as a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul will say later, I wish you all spoke in tongues like I do. But he's trying to say there's a difference between a public word in tongues versus you praying in tongues. If you're going to give a public word in tongues, there needs to be an interpretation. But whenever, and, and so whenever we pray in tongues or we speak out loud in tongues, nobody else knows Unless somebody, unless it's a word in tongues and the interpretation comes, then now the whole body of Christ can know the difference, right? Speaking or praying in tongues edifies self. That's not, I don't mean that bad, like selfish, but yourself, your own vessel. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but unto God. For no man understands him. How be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he that prophesies speaks unto men. So now he's delineating, I want you to know that, the difference between the gift of tongues versus the gift of prophecy. 
And what he's saying is, is that when a person speaks prophecy, it speaks edification unto men. The letter to the Ephesian church also talks about edifying the body of Christ. It's a building up. It's a construction term to build people up, to strengthen them. The reason that the body of Christ needs to be edified or built up is also so that they would be equipped. Let me ask you a question because y'all are pretty smart. Why do the people of God need to be equipped? To do the work of the ministry. She said to preach the gospel to them out there. It's not like Brother Kurt said. It's not just I can't move the words and use, but it's not just so we can get the free zones or so we can get a buzz. <laughs> it's not just so we can get a buzz in the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, Lord, but no. It's so that the presence of God will fill us up. He'll strengthen us. He'll equip us. He'll edify us. And he'll prepare us to do the work of the ministry. But it's so that he that prophesies, because see, that's a word of edification that's coming out for the whole body of Christ. He that prophesies speaks to men for the purpose of edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. The Holy Spirit prays through us. Romans 8 and 26. Now, this is not, I do not believe that this is praying in tongues. P people teach it this way, but I think it's pretty clear that the word groanings is not the word tongues. Likewise, the Spirit, um, we're talking about praying in the Spirit. And part of praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. But also, sometimes praying in the Spirit is groanings. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. What is an infirmity? When you're weak, it might mean a physical sickness, but it might mean a weakness. You might be going through something. You might, you might been going through something. You might can't feel like you can shake this thing you're going through. You might sometimes, when you alone, feel like you ain't going to make it. I'm here to tell you that if you'll release yourself and surrender to the Lord, he'll pray through you. The Holy Spirit, he helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought to, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I know I've talked about this before. We're not going to get much further than this because it's already 8 o'clock and we're going to let the music ministry come up here and give us a song out of here. And maybe while y'all are making your way, I just want to make a point. Though, and let me just say this while we're on it. Y'all can go ahead and come up. But I want to say this while we're on this concept. So if a person gives a prophetic word out loud to the church, they're giving a word in their natural language and everybody would be able to to know what it is. I'm not giving one right now, but this would be an example. Thus says the Lord, continue to seek me and I will fill you. And as I fill you and you pour yourself out, I will fill you up even more. And as I fill you up even more, I will bring people to you and I will bring you here and there from the north, the south, the east, the west. And when you begin to speak, my anointing will be upon you. And when you speak, the word of life will enter into them and bring life to them. And they, and, and they will receive life, life more abundantly. Thus says the Lord. And then you'll be out there and the Holy Spirit's like ministering to you. And it might even a word that was said was something specifically that the Lord had already shown you or spoke to you. And you're like, man, that bears witness with my spirit. That was a move of the spirit of God. But look, whenever Sabrina gives a word in tongues or if somebody else gives a word in tongues and then somebody else has an interpretation of tongues. And this is important enough that it needs to be said more than one time. So somebody, let's just say somebody gives a word in tongues. And then all of a sudden, somebody's moved upon to give the interpretation. So they speak in tongues, it's an unknown tongue, and then this person over here is moved upon to give the interpretation. Now when these two gifts meet, what happens? It becomes a word of prophecy. It becomes a word of prophecy that brings edification to the body of Christ. But without the interpretation, it's just an unknown tongue. And nobody knows what it is. That's the difference between praying in tongues and giving a prophetic word in tongues that has interpretation with it. I want to say this one more thing before I talk about groanings and we let the music ministry play. That whenever, um, sometimes, when, okay, so, so, you, so should, should we take a poll and find out if anybody flows in the gift of interpretation? I don't think we, that's not what we need to do. We don't need to vote. Hey, do you flow in the gift of interpretation? No. As pastor, now listen, there is a scripture that distinctly says that if no one has interpretation, to be silent. But let me tell you something. How are you going to know 
whether or not you ever got somebody flowing in the gift of interpretation if nobody ever gets a gift of the word of tongues. That's right. So we're not going to sit here and say, hey, uh, so-and-so, you, you got the gift of interpretation? No, nobody, anybody got it here? Raise your hand if you got the gift of interpretation. And if nobody lifts up their hand, we're going to automatically say we're going to quash the Holy Spirit and not let him speak in tongues? No. Now what we will know is this. If we're becoming a mature body of Christ, I believe this will happen. There was a guy that used to go to an old church in Cornerstone that every now and then, maybe twice or three times a year, he would bust out in a word in tongues. And nobody would ever bring him in tongues. So either one or two, now he didn't do it every service. Maybe two, three times a year. And so maybe one or two things was happening. Either number one, there was nobody in the house of God that had an interpretation, which I I kind of wonder about that because would the Holy Spirit move on someone to, but let me say this, if you feel the, again, I have not operated in this gift, but what I've been told is that when it comes upon you, you know the Holy Spirit is telling you to do it. And what I'm trying to tell you to do is, if it comes upon you, release it. Then, yes ma'am. That, that's well, this what it, and, and I do believe that that happens. But what it says is if you give tongues and there's no interpretation to pray, that you would also give the interpretation. So, what I do believe is is that sometimes people have then now be, been given the interpretation gift also to go along with the tongue that they have. But I do believe that the Lord wants it also to be able to be one person gets the word of tongues, right. another person gets the interpretation. And I believe that whenever the tongue comes forth, I personally believe the Holy Spirit's moving on somebody to get the interpretation. They just gotta step out. They gotta step out. Yeah. They gotta step out. So the person first needs to step out, the person second needs to step out. And all I'm trying to say is, and I'm not saying this ugly, I'm not being mean. I'm just saying, if we don't step out, what are we doing? We're quenching the spirit. And we don't want to quench the spirit. Last thing I want to do, I'm going to give you an example. When my sister died tragically, I had never known anything about really how to worship the Lord, and I definitely didn't know what Romans meant. Preachers had told me, and I probably shared this with y'all before, preachers had told me that I was praying in the spirit, but there was a time whenever the Holy Spirit fell in my living room, and for about four months, I found myself doing the same thing. I was travailing in prayer. And I got to tell you that it was the most powerful, cathartic, cleansing experience that I have ever had in my life. It was me and the Lord, and he was moving on my heart, and I was telling him how sorry I was that I had failed him. But look, he was doing it in a way that as soon as I was coming clean with him, he was healing me. It was so deep. It was so powerful. And you don't, you don't need to. Like, if you need to come to me, brother, sister, I promise you by the grace of God, I'm going to treat you right. We're going to pray. I'm going to believe God with you. But you know who you really need to learn how to go to? You need to go to learn to your, go to your Savior. And if you'll do that, if you'll pour your heart out, I'm telling you right now, he will heal you. He will minister to you in a way. And anyway, that's what it looked like. I'd just be over there, like, cr crawling. Ah! I mean, it's gotten to the point now where I done used all my English words. I done used all my tongues. And now I'm just almost to the point where there's no more energy left in my body. And I've been now, at this point now, I'm already asking. I done asked forgiveness for, for letting my sister down. However I, let it. You don't, I don't need you to build me up. The Lord's already done it. Oh, no, Matt, you didn't do that wrong. You don't know what I did. I know what the Lord told me, and I know that he knew how to heal me. So now that I got past all that, this is about three months in. Now you know what it is? Ah! Lord, you are so old. Lord, I'm not even a preacher yet. Lord, send me to somebody, please. Ah! Ah! Lord, I hear what you're saying. Now, that might make you feel weird. I don't know. It might make you feel weird. But I'm telling you right now, the Lord was giving me so much power and so much strength as I lined up with him as my heart connected to his heart. And I'm telling you right now, you want to learn how to get to the place where you're broken in the presence of the Lord. And where the Lord, the Spirit of God, will start groaning through you and that the will of God will start groaning through you. Because look, everybody else in the world going to think you weird. But guess what? The Lord's going to be giving you power and anointing.
anointing, hallelujah, and he's going to make right everything that's been wrong. Spirit of depression, gone in the name of Jesus. Every hurt, every heartache, gone in the name of Jesus. Purpose for life, here. It makes no sense to them on the outside. The natural mind cannot perceive the things of God. They are spiritually understood. But it starts to make so much sense. Hallelujah. Let's close this out by praising the Lord for a little bit. Amen? Yes. Thank you, Lord.